Hello everybody again. The second method for the valuation of common stock uh, is the residual income model. Actually, this model is more practical, more, uh, I would say, flexible than the first method. Let me remind you of the first method, which is the dividend discount model. The basic assumption of, uh, actually two assumptions of the dividend discount model. Uh, the fir first assumption is that the company has to pay dividends. Uh, the second assumption is that the required rate of return must be greater than the growth rate of dividends. If one of these two terms uh, is violated, uh, we will not be able to use a dividend discount model. For example, if the company doesn't pay any dividends, so the equation ends up with uh, zero. We don't have a price equal to zero. Uh, the second assumption, if the growth rate of dividends is greater than the required rate of return on investment, we end up with a negative price, which is nonsense again. So the second method, which is the residual income model, uh, doesn't take into account whether or not the company pays out dividends. Actually, it uses uh, another uh, uh, variable, uh, which is the, the earnings per share. Definitely every company ends up with a net income when you divide the net income by the number of stocks uh, you have the earnings per share. The very formal model used in this case has two forms, either this one or this one, and each of them are equivalent to each other mathematically. So you end up with the same result. Uh, the parameters uh, shown in this equation are uh, quite uh, simple. The, the EPS stands for the earnings per share, and the subscript zero refers to the current earnings per share. I mean, what the company has actually ended up with. The second parameter, the B, stands for the book value per share, which is the amount of equity, again, divided by the number of shares. And then we have the earnings growth rate, the G, and a discount rate, or sometimes we refer to it as a required rate of return on investment. Uh, we have an example here, which is uh, a real-life example although the data is not up to date, but uh, it's a real life exam. Uh, one company in July 1st, 2010, this stock was selling at this price, 22.48. And the, we collected the information about this company, the earnings per share, uh, the dividend equal to zero, which is quite convenient in this case. We do not need it actually. The book value per share, the uh, growth rate of earnings and the required rate of return is 30. When you work out the equation, you end up with this value. And in this case, when you compare the real price of the stock, which is 12.07, with the market price of the stock, it's quite obvious that the this stock is overvalued. Uh, So it takes us to another question, uh, whether we will be able to look at a certain uh, required rate of return. I mean, whether we end up with an overvalued stock or undervalued stock, there's certain parameters that we need to look at in this case uh, in order to see or to find out why one stock is overvalued and the other one is undervalued. The very uh, common factor that differentiates between uh, one stock being overvalued or undervalued is the required rate of return. Actually, the information available to us, as you see here, is uh, uh, the, the current earnings per share book value and uh, the earnings growth rate. These are historical. Uh, data about the company, in many cases we call them observed data, 
except for this one, the required rate of return. It is determined by the investor, so it's up to the investor's expectation about the required rate of return that determines whether one stock is overvalued or undervalued uh, in the stock market. Uh, we can do uh, a kind of elaboration uh, using the same numbers and the same givens. We assume, for example, that uh, we need to find out what is the required rate of return on investment in the stock. If the investor in the stock market actually trading the stock at 22.48, uh, when you substitute uh, this information into this equation, and we have only one variable unknown, the k, the required rate of return, and you arrange the equation and solve it for k, you end up with 9.3. Uh, I'll show you in a few seconds how can we reach the 9.3 in a very simple mechanism using Excel. But for now, we can uh, find out that the stock has actually been overvalued uh, simply because the investors have been asking for uh, a much higher required rate of return, which is 13%. If the investors uh, have lowered the required rate of return to 9.3, uh, they could have reached the same price as it is trading uh, in the stock market. Uh, we can benefit from this information for making an investment decision quite easily. It means exactly uh, that if the investors pay this price for the stock currently, it means that they are investing their money at 9.3%. Uh, so it's up to the available investment opportunities to the investor to decide whether or not to invest in this stock. For example, if one investor has another investment opportunity that earns greater than 9.3, so the investor doesn't have to invest in this stock if he did not buy it at all. Otherwise, if he is currently investing in this stock, he can very easily sell it and move the money to another investment opportunity. The same is true the other wise. If uh, the 9.3 is, is very attractive, very competitive rate of return in the market, which means that the investment op opportunities available to the investors do not earn uh, this rate of return, on so the investor can stay with this stock if he already has it. Otherwise, he can buy uh, this stock as an investment opportunity. So actually, when you combine both of information together, the company's fundamentals, the right-hand side of this equation is what we call it company's fundamentals. And this is part of what we call it the fundamental analysis and you combine it with the market values, the stock price, you can end up with return on investment, which is quite an accurate and precise metric for making an investment decision. Now I can show you very easily how can you uh, reach this figure. Uh, uh, basically, you can rearrange the equation and solve it for K, but uh, the Excel is providing you a mechanism where you can do the solution in a very uh, simple way. Uh, when you go to uh, the Excel file and this sheet, RIM stands for residual income model. When you click on data, you have these two icons show up and then you click on solver this screen shows up. The, the objective here is that we need this price to, to be equal to the market price, which is 22.48. By changing the variable, the variable that we need to change here is the required rate of return in order to find out what is the uh, fair required rate of return. And when you click solve, you have 
this is screen, which means that the Excel has reached a resolution. And uh, you can realize from this one that the solution is uh, there, that the Excel has a change in the market price to 22.48, which is the current stock price. And uh, the, the growth rate, uh, sorry, the required rate of return is 9.3. Uh, now we'll be moving to the third method of uh, stock valuation. 